Hi there, this is Rajat here, welcoming you to this video. And today I have a lot of super special stuff for you as part of the Startup Frat Hangout two year anniversary celebrations. If you're watching me for the first time in the Startup Frat Hangout, then uh, just to give you a backstory, I am a medical doctor turned marketing consultant who was uh, doing primarily corporate consultancy till the lockdown of April 2020. And during that time, you know, once my clients went off air, I had nothing to do at home, locked in. <laughs> then I decided to just share some of my views, some of my knowledge that I had gained across two or three countries, um, you know, in, in my Facebook group. And that has grown to the Startup Frat Hangout today, which at the time of recording this video is 25,000 plus people. We are completing two years of doing this at the time of recording this video. I have have, uh, over 125 plus high quality trainings that uh, have been consumed by so many different people and uh, in fact I've got uh, you know I've got business deals 180 plus uh, different kinds of different sizes of business deals over the last two years just by virtue of doing that I highly recommend that if you are a small business owner if you're a coach consultant uh, you know speaker trainer author if you're a network marketer commission seller LIC mutual fund real estate broker uh, or even if you run your own agency, then you need to own the information, you need to own the, the trust, etc. that is built. Uh, currently, you know, you may, you may be in a position where you no, may not be owning it. Uh, so as part of our anniversary celebrations, I'm going to be rolling out a series of very high quality trainings. And there's going to be a lot of gifts that you can earn if you keep interacting with these videos. So today, I, I just want you to watch this video very, very carefully. And then I want you to comment, let me in if you want to be a part of, uh, you know, if you want to be a part of what's coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow is April 9th. Tomorrow morning, we, you know, complete two years. So, <laughs> so I'm going to be rolling out a high quality training, which is going to be worth at least 50,000 rupees or more. <clears throat> okay. Now, why do I say that is because if you scroll up and down uh, on this, uh, on this hangout group, you will find trainings, uh, certain trainings. One training is called the mind muscle which has helped a lot of people turn around more than 1 lakh rupees uh, while taking their business or their practice online or while creating a marketing arm or a consulting arm for their business which earlier may not have had one and uh, there's another training called uh, the linchpin yeah so i've had multiple testimonials of people who said i was able to earn at least 1 lakh rupees uh, by watching this training and if you go down and watch this training just watch the comments in the you know comments on the trainings and you will see those people having commented saying you know this is the training that actually helped me turn around so i have released multiples of these high quality trainings tomorrow's training is going to be super kick ass i can guarantee you that so if you want to be notified of it uh, when we actually roll it out it's going to be a live stream i want you if you want to be notified i want you to comment let me in on this video okay what's it going to be about i'm just going to tell you what it's going to be about so you can decide for yourself if it's for you or not <clears throat> also if you're watching this video anywhere outside the startup frat hangout which is our facebook mastermind then i want you to head over and enter the startup frat hangout okay uh, we have free membership so you want to head on over to startupfrat.club forward slash facebook that's startupfrat.club forward slash Facebook. Okay, that's my handwriting. Medical doctors are supposed to have horrible handwriting. So that's my horrible handwriting right there. Okay, startupfrat.club forward slash Facebook. Okay, you want to head over there, free membership, apply for the free membership, you'll probably be approved within a period of a couple of hours. And then that's where all the real action is. So some of the older videos, uh, you know, we are now repurposing and putting them up on YouTube and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, you can find them over there. If you're watching this video anywhere outside the Startup Frat Hangout, then you want to get into the Startup Frat Hangout because all the current stuff is happening on a real time basis over there in the Startup Frat Hangout, which is over here in the Startup Frat Hangout. All right, now let's get started. So basically, uh, who is this training going to be for? How can you get access to it? Uh, people who commented, if you commented on the happy anniversary uh, video that I put up yesterday, your gift will be there in your message stream. So you'll have a, uh, you know, private message. Uh, you'll have a message saying, hey, uh, you know, this is how you can access your gift. And what is this gift? I'm just going to talk about in one second. So we have daily rounds of gifts. Okay. <laughs> Let me just talk about today's topic. And then uh, I'm going to talk about your gift as well, which is already you just go down and check your comment. You've been tagged in there. Uh, I've given you a gift, which is worth uh, 3000 rupees. Okay. Now, what is this? Uh, so basically, 
Uh, what we're going to talk about today is the aggregator conundrum. Okay, I'm just going to give you the intro piece today. Tomorrow morning is going to be the live stream. Uh, like I said, if you want to, if you want to get the full juice, you want to comment, let me in. Okay, let me in uh, right below this video. Okay, now <clears throat> what is it? Who is this training meant for? Who is this training meant for? Primarily, if you are into, if you are a commission seller. Okay, if you are a commission seller. Okay, what are commission sellers? If your name is not on your product, if your name and your face is not on the product, so uh, network marketers, okay, network marketing, networkers. Then you have uh, financial product sellers. If you are selling uh, anything that is like, if you're a stockbroker, stock trader, or selling, uh, you know, courses around stockbroking, stock trading. Uh, if you have a Facebook group around stockbroking, stock trading, or if you're into selling mutual funds, if you're a mutual fund salesperson, <clears throat> if you're an LIC or any kind of insurance salesperson, um, you know, or even if you're into Bitcoin and crypto, which is the new currency today, and it, uh, it has a lot of promise. And, you know, over the next 20, 25 years, we're going to see a lot of difference being made via crypto. So if you're into Bitcoin and crypto selling or trading, then, uh, you know, this education could be useful for you. Then, uh, then uh, you have... Uh, what are other commission sellers you have real estate guys okay real estate brokers so real estate brokers are always selling either first hand properties which is the name and face on the property that of the builder or you're selling second hand properties which is you're selling on behalf of a seller a retail seller and you know you're or you're helping a buyer and seller get together okay this also includes the rentals if you're into rentals and you know so basically you don't own the property but you're you're leasing it out on behalf of somebody else in return for a commission if you're a commission seller your name and face is not on your property then startup rat is the specialized place where we give advice especially about that now if you're a small business owner okay if you're a small business owner you are in a unique position you own the product which means you own the supply but you don't own the demand how do you generate the demand then this uh, video is going to be for you uh, if you're a coach consultant uh, you know if you're a coach, consultant, train, trainer, speaker, author, you can gain from this training. However, uh, I'll just tell you upfront, you may be seeing thousands of ads on Facebook and every ad is targeted to coach, consultant, trainer, speaker, author. I am not uh, a specialist in providing training to this demographic. However, I have been a consultant myself and in the lockdown of 2020, I was able to take my practice online. So yes, I can share with you uh, those secrets. So coach, consultant, trainer, speaker, author, TSA, <laughs> okay, coach, consultant, trainer, speaker, author. Um, and then if you are a private practitioner, if you are a doctor, lawyer, chartered accountant, okay, so I'll say doctor, lawyer, okay, chartered accountant. This, this is a very, very special segment for me because um, I started out in medical practice. I actually quit my hospital job to go into market research and that landed me into my consultation career. I do not have an MBA. All I have is an MBBS degree from India's number two ranked medical college. And I was able to make that jump very early on in my life. It's been 17 years now. Uh, and uh, I, my heart goes out to private practitioners because all of the good information, education or, or whatever services that you're providing uh, the value is in the actual provision of the services, but the money comes from the actual marketing and they are not really focused very well on their own marketing. Uh, so you will probably gain from this. Now, what is the topic for today? The topic is very important. What can we learn? If you look around and keep your ears tuned to the market, if you look around and keep your ears tuned to the market, you're going to be learning a lot of things by observing what is happening in the market around you. And today I want to talk to you about the aggregator conundrum, aggregator conundrum aggregators if you look around at the businesses of aggregators you will you will learn so much that uh, you know it's probably going to give you more value than buying courses or you know uh, kind of uh, <laughs> dealing with gurus and things like that okay what is the aggregator conundrum the market was changed when globalization happened which is globalization is aggregation on a global scale otherwise you have aggregation on a local scale like you have Swiggy, for example, okay, Swiggy and Zomato. I'll just take the example of Swiggy and Zomato. Swiggy, Zomato, you have Uber and Ola, you have uh, Oyo Rooms, Oyo Rooms, and then you have uh, uh, you have the uh, Airbnb, which is the global version of the Oyo Rooms, okay, you have Airbnb. Um, so I'll just take these examples for now and what do you learn from these examples? I'll take Amazon. Okay, Amazon is another big example. 
Um, Amazon is a slightly different example, but the lessons to be learned are, are the same. So I'm just going to talk about that for just a second. Okay. So Swiggy, Zomato, Uber, Ola, Oyo Rooms, Airbnb, which is into the hotel segment. This is cars and taxis. This is food delivery. Amazon is into delivery of literally everything under the sun. Okay. Now what is there to be learned? When the aggregators came into place, when Amazon first came or Flipkart first came, you know, first started in India, when Amazon first came to India, or when you have Oyo Rooms that first started, uh, Uber, Ola that first started, uh, Swiggy and Zomato that first started it was great for customers because they were able to, uh, you know, the level of convenience for a customer was so high, was so high. And uh, uh, what also happened was that sometimes we were under the, the, the iron clinch of the suppliers. Like, for example, before Uber and Ola was there, you know, you were under the clinch of the local supplier, which is the auto rickshaw. Yeah, so you go to find an auto rickshaw, auto rickshaw doesn't want to go where you want to go and then they're going to charge X amount of prices, you know, which is going to be like not as per the meter or something like that, right? So you're under the clinch of the, of the local supplier and then the aggregator comes and they say, okay, you know, we're going to provide a solution. So it's beautiful. It's great for the customer. It works great. Uh, and then I want to talk about what is happening today. Okay, so fast forward a few years and what happens today and why it happens. Okay, today if you see... Amazon, like I said, Amazon is a slightly different example, but I won't go into it in great detail. That's not the topic of this video. I'll probably make a different video about it. But uh, Amazon today, if you look at uh, the Amazon's delivery service, which is, you know, the shipping of products to you, to your house, um, they make less than 4% profit. Actually, they don't make any money. <laughs> in fact, constantly people are saying, you know, Jeff Bezos files his tax return, doesn't pay any tax. That's because he doesn't make any money. Okay, so Amazon uh makes less than four percent profit on the delivery service okay less than four percent profit imagine the amount of money they have at stake at any point in time they have their own planes they have their own shipping they have their own uh warehouses they have everything they got all of this money at stake and the net profit for them is only four percent so unless they dominate the market they will probably go bankrupt so big that the whole world economy is going to shake but right now they're dominant so it's good everybody is happy you know they're happy everybody's happy okay some people are not happy. I'll tell you about that in just a second. Second, Oyo Rooms. Okay, when Oyo Rooms came or when Airbnb, again, Airbnb is surviving, but they're surviving on, I think that's also similar, very less profit. I think it's less than 2% profit. And, uh, and uh, you know, um, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a house of cards waiting to fall. Oyo Rooms has already gone bust. Okay, Oyo Rooms has already gone bust. Then you have Uber and Ola very close to going bust. You have Swiggy and Zomata. Yeah, they are also kind of not doing very good. How can you read the signs? You don't need to read any financial report or anything like that. Yeah, a lot of you must be thinking, oh my God, you know, do I have to read a bunch of <laughs> financial reports and all these shareholding complicated reports, you know, to make out what's happening. No, you don't need to. What's happening is very, very simple. Okay, there are three elements. There are three elements to any kind of aggregation. And what my message to you in this video is going to be how you can control as many of them as possible. Okay, there are three elements to any kind of aggregation. The first is the information. The second is the supplier or the back end, we call it the back end. And the third is the trust. Okay, information, trust and back end. Now, what happened before the aggregators, before the aggregation or the globalization kind of thing started was you had only one thing. You just had the supplier. You had zero trust, zero information. Think about the time when you have to catch an auto rickshaw to go to office. You would start out from your house with at least 20, 30 minute, uh, you know, extra cushion window. Why? Because there is only one person involved, which is the auto rickshaw wala that you have to find. You have, a, you have zero trust in the whole system. So you know that the, there's going to be three or four people are going to say no to you before one guy says yes to you. Uh, you know that all of them are going to overcharge you, try to overcharge you as soon as they find out, okay, you're getting late to office. Yeah, so you have zero trust in the system. Uh, there is zero information available to you when you get out of your house, which is how much time will it get take for you to find one auto rickshaw? How many auto rickshaws are going to be available at the stand? Probably all of them are going to say no. Then you're going to stand slightly away from the rickshaw stand. You're going to look at all the ones passing by. You're going to wave them off. They are more likely to say yes. Yeah, zero information available. What is the probability you're going to find an auto rickshaw in the next five minutes, 10 minutes? You have no information. Yeah, so this, this system was broken. Okay, now think about today. With Uber, you have the information. 
you may not have the supply but you have the information which means if you open the app it will tell you that there is a cab available yes or no there is no cab available if there is a cab available it will tell you that it's available in the next five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes whatever okay trust what is the trust you know for sure that you can trust uber which basically means you put up the, your money in their wallet and you know the two thousand three thousand rupees are lying in the wallet you know for sure uh, that whenever you charge for a ride it will be a fair price they keep saying hey we, we may charge you something extra for the surge fees you know if there's a lot of traffic jam you may end up getting charged extra but you know your money is safe with them and if there is something that happens you dispute it they refund the money you know the trust level is very high okay so with the aggregator system the trust level is high the information level is high and the supplier and back end can also scale which basically means how many people were able to take loans and start their own cabs just because they could sign up with Ola, Uber and start their own business, which is the cab, you know, running their own cab and, you know, paying EMI for it and earning from Ola and Uber. A lot of people were not able to do that before that because they didn't know where to get the business from. So on their end also, the information was not available. The trust was not there. <laughs> That's why they were, you know, not likely to basically start their own business or take a risk uh, in, in supplying a customer. Okay. Think about Swiggy and Zomato. Before Swiggy and Zomato, you had to actually go to a restaurant <laughs> and you don't know how much time it will take. You don't know whether you'll find parking or not. You don't know whether you'll find a table or not. You have to call in advance to book a table. And this this was like a, you know, half a day program. If you want to take your family out for dinner, uh, you know, four hours, you got to plan for a two hour dinner. Why? Because you got to get ready. Then you got to get into your car. Does the car have enough petrol? Yes. No. Okay. Let's, you know, how much traffic you're going to find on the way? Where are you going to park? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So the information is not available, which is how much time is going to take. Uh, the supplier is there and the trust is not there in the process. The trust may be there in the restaurant, but the trust is not there in the process, which is you know, uh, am I going to get a seat? Am I not going to get a seat? Which which restaurant am I going to go to? You know, that the whole thing turns into a big discussion. Today, with Swiggy, if there are four different people in the house, they want separate cuisines. Every You know, you can order four separate dishes and, you know, Swiggy will just uh, send them over to your house. Okay. Uh, similarly, with, uh, with this on the supplier side, there has been such a boom in cloud kitchens today because information is available and trust is available. The supplier, when they start a cloud kitchen or a restaurant, they know that yes, if I sign up with Swiggy, you know, once I get listed, I will get some business because, you know, they're constantly, uh, you know, promoting me or promoting themselves and, you know, by default, I get the business or whatever. Okay. So Uber, Ola, the same thing with Oyo Rooms, <laughs> you know, you know that there is a price, you know, the price is fair. Otherwise, if you go to a hotel, you don't know what the price is. You don't know if the price is fair. You always, there are always stories where you say, oh, you can always negotiate a price with the hotel. Why did you pay list price? You never needed to pay list price. And then you're like, oh my God, you can't trust these hotels. They list some price and they have some other available price and the good negotiators get better price. You know, you always have some person in your family who will say, hey, why did you pay full rate, man? You can always negotiate these rates with the hotel. So then your trust level goes down. When you go over there, you don't know what kind of environment you're going to find. You don't know if your holiday is going to be successful or not. You don't want to know if the service level is going to be great or not. But with Oyo Rooms or with uh, any of these listing services, there is trust because you can see the rating, you can see the customer reviews, you can see the photos clicked by the customers off the premises. So there's a certain level of trust. You can see some interactions with a manager may have apologized to the customer for a complaint or something. All of that is showcased in there. Trust level is high information is available and uh, you know the supplier is obviously supplying the service even from the supplier side they now have a guaranteed flow of at least 20 30 40 percent of their business comes from the listing service so they know that yes i am you know i'm i'm safe that way because uh, hotel rooms and airline seats they expire with time once the time has passed when the day has passed you have four empty rooms then those rooms will never be paid for right now with the listing service the trust is there okay so three big components remember this three big components information supplier and supplier and the trust how does this affect you how does this affect you all of these aggregation systems are failing today okay how do you know that when you open zomato and it says we have no rider then that means there is a problem okay when you buy swiggy one which says we are going to give you free delivery and then Two months later, they say, oh, actually free delivery is only applicable at certain restaurants. On this restaurant, we don't give free delivery. So we will still charge you a price, although we charge you for the membership. That means the system is failing. <laughs> Oyo rooms, you already know the story, already gone bust. Okay. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Happening with Ola and Uber also. If you see after the lockdown, so many different taxi drivers' businesses gone bust that they have actually released their cards. 
the cars have been you know taken by the bank and now if you look for an uber or ola or something the supply of cars is so less that it's you know you'll have to wait a long time to get a car to get a cab uh, you know supply of cabs is not there and then the driver is going to call you and ask you where do you want to go no it's a high traffic area i don't make enough money on this deal so they're going to cancel the ride okay so you know the system is broken the system is not growing it's decaying okay it's a short bubble it was a short bubble few years f- probably four five years yeah we enjoyed the short bubble probably four five eight years that's the max yeah and then the bubble has died out okay so what is there to learn from this what is there to learn from this if you are a business owner okay if you are a business owner if you are in any one of those categories i spoke about if you're a commission seller or if you're a practitioner which basically means doctor lawyer chartered accountant if you're a small business owner which means you have a travel agency you have a restaurant you have a salon or whatever it is on the ground then you want to make sure that not only are all of these three components present not only are all these three components present that you control all of these three components yourself okay that you control all of these three components yourself so if you don't have these three components or if you're dependent on any one of these three components on somebody else then you want to build your own you want to build your own private well from which you can take the water rather than depending that i'm going to open the tap and water is going to come because some days tap is going to you're going to open the tap and there's going to be no water okay now why why is the system failing let's go into why the system is failing okay the supplier especially in india is already working at rock bottom prices okay so cabs are already working at rock bottom prices so supplier is already working at low profit okay so the aggregator which is the information provider aggregate the aggregator is the information provider yeah the aggregator is the information provider what they do is they have to go very very big which means they have to have millions of cabbies under their ambit or they need to have millions of hotel rooms under their ambit to be able to provide a service anyway okay and the information is worthless if it is not at scale so scale is a problem scale is a problem so what they do is they go out and do all kinds of crazy things in order to create the scale okay they do all kinds of crazy things in order to create the scale uh i'll just give you the example of uh, uber okay so what does uber do it goes out and says uh not only do i advise that everybody get their own car so we can have enough number of cars so we can supply all of this all of these customers i will also provide a financing service i'll also provide cars where uber owns the car and you just drive the car and all kinds of options they're going to provide now they're suddenly getting out of their core business and going into areas dangerous areas they're going into dangerous areas which is financial arbitrage okay financial arbitrage is best done by banks <laughs> or by finance companies <laughs> but when you know your car company gets into financial arbitrage that's a very dangerous situation you have uh, you have let's take the example of um, uh, swiggy okay unless they have thousands and thousands of riders in every city unless they have thousands and thousands of riders in every city the service will not run because millions of people are going to just open up swiggy at the same time on saturday night and start ordering tandoori chicken and there are not enough riders so what happens is that the trust is going to die immediately yeah <laughs> trust i'm just going to go to trust okay trust okay so what do they do what do they do in order to create the scale they just go out hire lots of people lots and lots of people when they don't know how much supply there's going to be on different days they make crazy promises to these people these people figure out you know after a month two months three months that i am working 12 hours a day running around in the sun and the rain and like a lot of it's not you know it's not really working for me it's not really working for me okay uh, so what they do is they either start quitting um, you know the scale kind of destroys itself after 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 a period of time what does swiggy do it operates at a razor thin margin while they're doing all of this they say oh one fine day one fine day there will be crores and crores of customers and even if i make one rupee profit on every you know every delivery or whatever it is then you know life is going to be good okay that's a dangerous dangerous assumption okay can you see the can you see the similarity between some of the businesses that i told you about okay do you see the similarity between network marketing yeah it's a game of arbitrage the supply is not owned by you the supply is not owned by you somebody else is providing the supply okay you are doing the information 
and the trust that you are, you have in the market you don't know how to build trust because a lot of middle class educated people like people like me they get into network marketing and they say okay i know all my friends family i know 500 people in the world they will probably you know they will i'll bring them into the business or whatever and the trust my friend is non transferable which basically means even if big companies like amway vestige oriflame uh, even if uh, you know Enagic, Herbalife, all of these are very respectable companies. Herbalife is actually a public limited company with the stock is trading on New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, even if these big companies, uh, what happens is the trust is not transferable. The company has a trust in the market, but when you produce, when you you know when you basically shake hands with your friends, family who basically know you as a loved, beloved brother, beloved sister, beloved daughter, beloved son, or whatever it is. And you suddenly try to transfer that trust to a company which is already trusted in the market that trust transfer does not really happen. Same with ICICI Prudential, if you're selling mutual funds, same with LIC, if you're selling insurance, you have a certain trust factor in certain people. There is a trusted company in the market, but this trust is not transferring to these people. And all the while you're working on arbitrage, which basically means they will supply the product, they will make 10, 15, 20% of profit or whatever it is. And they will give me some profit out of that, maybe two, three, four percent. Okay, a lot of network marketers say, yeah, yeah, I, I own 40% of the profit line or 30% of the profit line. But that's only when you become that big. When you're starting out in the business, remember the first one year of the business is most critical. First two years of the business is most critical. Look at the startup right hangout. Yeah, very happy to turn two years. Why? First two years of the business is very, very critical. 99% of the businesses will fail in the first five years. That means the first couple of years, very critical. If you don't sustain in that time, you're never going to go and own the 40% profit line. You're never going to go and own the 40% profit line. So you're working on 2, 5, 10%, whatever the profit line is. I remember from my old days in network marketing, it was like 3%, 6%, 9%. That's not enough, especially on a small volume to sustain. Okay, very simple, very, very similar, very similar fashion over here. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so trust is non-transferable, supplier is not under your control or the supply is not under your control. And, uh, you know, the information that you're providing, you know, is you're not providing it at scale. Information is best provided at scale. Okay, information is best provided at scale. Uh, look at me, I'm making this video. Why am I making this video? Why am I taking the time out of my corporate consulting career to make this video? because this video is going to reach 25,000 people. If this video is going to reach my own friends and family, like five, 10 people, I wouldn't have bothered doing it, right? Scale, information has to be delivered at scale for the business to be valuable, okay? Now let's talk about uh, doctors, lawyers, and chartered accountants. Let's talk about doctors, lawyers, and chartered accountants. Uh, they own the delivery, yeah, you are the supplier, okay? So you know how to deliver the service, okay? There is no information about you in the market. You don't own the information, probably you're listed with Practo, probably you're listed with some listing service. In every industry, there's a listing service, right? Uh, a few days ago, by the way, um, uh, I was uh, I was fortunate to be uh, invited to Ed Talks, which is the IAI3. They're an educational institution and they talk about education, the future of education, EduTalk. And that's a, that's a big listing service. It's very, very uh, uh, fortunate of me to be selected. And they interviewed me. The interview is given right below in the Facebook Hangout, uh, in the Startup Frat Facebook Hangout. If you're watching this video anywhere else, then head over to startupfrat.club forward slash Facebook. Anyway, so for me, that's, that's, a, that's a great opportunity because they are an educational company. They have, you know, they have different kinds of things. They interview lots of good people in the marketplace. So when they invited me, I was like, wow, you know, our name is listed somewhere. So every business has a listing service. However, however, uh, if you are entirely dependent on the listing service, then you don't own the information. So in the case of practitioners, you own this, but you don't own this reverse case of a commission seller. <laughs> okay. And the trust in the marketplace, you don't own that as well because you're dependent on references. You're, you're dependent on the fact that you're going to provide your service to 100 customers. Let us say in the case of a doctor, you're going to serve 100 patients. You're going to depend on the fact that at least 20, 30 of them will be super happy, so super happy that they're going to refer you forward. And for those people that they are referred, for them to be able to consume the service, the condition needs to exist that they must have the exact same sickness that this person had. <laughs> so if you serve like a cancer patient and save their life, you have to bet on the fact Cancer has a very high mortality rate and doctors have absolutely, I would say that even if the cancer has a high mortality rate, there is, you know, in certain cases, doctor cannot really, uh, everything is not in the doctor's hands. 
right? So let us say you have 30% of super, you know, satisfied patients who are like, dude, this guy was the best, you know, the price was great, you know, he was a very genuine person, etc, etc. Now those, you're betting on the fact that those 30% of the people are going to suddenly start having, you know, other cancer patients in their vicinity or in their friends and family that they're going to refer over to you. Those guys need to be in the same town for them to be able to take your service and things like that. Okay, so it's a big complicated game. Trust is a big complicated game. Once again, these two are very closely interrelated. If you're unable to own the information at scale, you'll never be, the trust will never translate into uh, more revenue, more patients or, you know, more uh, clients or anything like that. Okay. That is the problem with practitioners. What about small business owners? If you're a travel agency, let me take the example of a travel agency because we have lots of successful travel agency uh, people in, in our Startup Frat uh, Academy community who have gained from these concepts. So <clears throat> first of all, the information. The second thing is the supply. And the third thing is the trust. The most difficult thing for in travel business is to get the trust because once a person books with you, once a person books with you, what happens is they're, they're putting the next 5 days, 7 days, 10 days, 15 days of their family into your hands. They want to have a certain experience. They want to make sure they don't get bad service on, you know, on the, on the destination. They want to make sure that all the trains, buses and cars run on time. They want to make sure that when their kid, you know, starts crying in the nights so, or, you know, they can order milk in the hotel or something like that, right? They have their needs and all of those needs are becoming, they're giving in your hands for 15 days. So trust is a big problem in the travel industry. Unless there is 200% trust, you will never get the the second thing is supply the supplier is not you don't really own the supply because when you charge 100 rupees for a travel deal 97 rupees is paid out to the end supplier <laughs> so there is no money in the game for you so you're building all of this trust it generates no money that takes 97 percent of your time so generating the trust takes 97 percent of your time generating the trust takes 97 percent of your time when you do get the deal, the deal only brings 3% of the money. So only 3% of the total revenue comes into your pocket. Okay. So you're wasting 97% of your time to earn 3% of the money. Okay. And uh, information, there is, you know, again, information is something that you don't have exclusive rights to. The moment a person says, I want to go to Maldives, all of the information on Maldives and all of the hotels and everything is available to them on the internet. So even if you were... Uh, banking on the fact that I'm going to send you to a special hotel, give you a special experience, that hotel and its prices and the quality and the customer feedback can be checked in five seconds on the website. So what a customer is going to do is going to back end and say, you're charging me X amount of money. Let's say you're sending them to Kerala, you're charging me two lakh rupees for this trip. And all of the hotels that you gave me, the total cost for all of the hotels is less than probably 60,000. Uh, the tickets cost less than 30,000. Uh, you know, the car, I can hire my own car over there because information is available over there. You know, uh, the whole thing will cost me less than one lakh ten thousand if I were to do it myself. So what you've done is you've given away the information. Okay. And the customer, the information is not yours. Uh, you know, information is, you don't have a rights to these information. Information is available on the internet and customer is going to cross check everything. They're going to negotiate you down on the price. Even if you do end up selling, you make only 3% of the money. And why the hell are you in the game? Because... Your only business is going to come from the, le let's say, probably 10 people who really trust you. Every travel agent has got their own group of probably a certain limited number of people who trust you. Okay. This model doesn't really work. Look at your business. If you're a small business owner, if you're, uh, you know, in, uh, owning a salon, if you're a travel agent or whatever, if you look at all of these three factors, you will realize that you have a control only on one factor. You have a control only on one factor. <laughs> okay so so basically what you want to do is you want to have control on all three factors you want to have a control on all of these three factors okay um, so again that was the intro from my side if you really want to be notified when we do the 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 rest of the training tomorrow please comment let me in into the comment box so we'll be able to send you comments and everything when we go live so you'll be able to be tuned one of the big reasons why i'm asking for your comments in the last few days uh, apart from getting my own social proof, of course, I, you know, it's great if on the anniversary I get 100 plus comments. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. But one of the big reasons is that now this Facebook Hangout has grown to 25,000 plus people and the videos are only able to reach about 2,000 people. So organic reach in Facebook is very, very limited once you have a big group. So it, it's great once, you know, until you go to 3,000, 5,000. After that, you know, you keep expanding 
and the videos are only reaching the you know limited number of people so i just did the analytics yesterday less than 2000 people will probably watch uh, you know my video so the more you keep commenting the more facebook will keep showing you my stuff so if you think this is valuable okay i want you to comment let me in not because of anything else is because the more you comment <laughs> the more facebook is going to show you uh, you know my stuff that comes out tomorrow day after and things like that okay uh, with that i leave you with this video and uh, i look forward to seeing you in the next video bye bye